There is absolutely nothing that I enjoy more than traveling to a new location to hunt, particularly in a country like South Africa that is so diverse. You never see the same thing twice. I had planned to meet up with my friend Gerard Slubert from Air Hunters to test out a couple Spot. new air guns, the best way that we know how, and that is to get out and to actually hunt with them in real world conditions. In the following few episodes, you're going to see a whole lot of rock hyrax hunting, also known as dussies, and later on this episode, some Egyptian goose control. Both these animals have been causing problems on farms in this area, and of course, we are more than happy to help. The journey is just as important as the destination, and our trip takes us through some moody valleys and over mountain passes before we eventually arrive at our campsite, which would be home for the next few days. So we've got the, uh, the Patriot back over here which is kitted out quite nicely for shooting um, we've got some ammo bags over here uh, range bags that Patriot sells which are actually really nice and I've got my impact there and then in here we've got some air and uh, a little inverter and battery pack to charge cameras and stuff and then just some more air and full adapters and all that stuff there so yeah really nicely kitted out and I think we're gonna have a, a good day we've got unlimited ammo unlimited air like literally I think we've got like probably 60 or 70 liters of air at 300 bar so we're not gonna run short anytime soon this is a brand new bribe pan and me and Matt spotted this pan yesterday at a local store nice thick you can always use it as a gong <laughs> it's a dual could. purpose <laughs> So we're going to definitely give this one a go and uh, try it out this weekend. With us having left home in the early hours of the morning, we weren't as wide awake as we'd like to be. So before heading out, it's time for a quick coffee. So, uh, this is my speciality. We've got some of the African farm blend, which is what we, what we used last time we went to Wittmoschler. So I think we're going to taste a bit of nostalgia now got the AeroPress as usual and yeah that's one thing we don't want to skimp on is, is good coffee we need to be wide awake for the hunting to come and it's awesome I mean we can literally see like all the mountains here there's probably dozens right up there right now watching us fearing for their lives so should be good it's gonna be a fun weekend Whilst enjoying our warm beverages a few doves came in to check us out and it's very clear that these aren't ever shot at in this area. I could I could so easily blast this thing with that little AP-16. Just a red dot. <laughs> That's crazy. You can hit him on the head with your coffee mug. Yeah, I wonder if he wants some coffee. Want some coffee. The dove did not want any coffee, <laughs> so we gulped down the rest, hopped into the truck, and headed down to the range to do some zero checks and shoot a few groups while conditions were good. As mentioned earlier, we do have some gorgeous new guns to test out. We have an FX Maverick set up to shoot slugs and Gerard hopes to be the first person in the world to shoot a dussy with the Maverick. We also have these. These are made by Precision Target Equipment in the Netherlands, something very unique, not your average mass-produced PCP by any standards. So just to run through my setup here, because it's something it's something really new, we literally just announced the Helix first focal plane yesterday, so that's the scope we're going to be using for this trip. Um, really solid clicks, zero stop, um, really nice reticle for like long range slash precision rifle shooting. Um, and, and very reliable tracking. So I'm really looking forward to using it. It should do the job really well. And then obviously the gun, it's a PTE, which stands for Precision Target Equipment. Uh, it's made in, in the Netherlands um, by a friend of Gerard and mine, his name is Martijn. Um, just such an insanely beautiful gun. Krieger barrel, 
um, titanium parts everywhere. Um, it's got a Remington footprint, so you can put on any Remington trigger. I've got a Bix and Andy trigger on here, which is literally the best trigger you'll ever feel. Beautiful stock that's great for like shooting off a bench, flat fore end, um, flat rear end for for riding a bag, adjustable cheek piece, just such an insanely beautiful gun. I've, I'll do a review on this gun separately, but um, yeah, should be good. I've actually put my 22250 silencer on here, the True Works, just because a lot of the air gun silencers I've used are um, a little bit, they're a little bit noisy. Um, the capacity inside is a bit small. Um, Gerald's got a nice big um, Huggett Magna on it, which also has a nice big capacity, but I found this True Works. I don't use it that much anymore, so instead of buying a new silencer, I just thought I'd get a thread adapter made. Um, one of Gerard's friends made it, and it fits here perfectly. So we're going to see how that does now. But yep, we're going to do a bit of shooting. Uh, there's very little wind right now, so it'll be a great opportunity to see how these these guns do, and um, then prepare for some hunting. Spot on. That was like a quarter of a mil to the right for wind drift there. 41 grainer at 974 feet per second. There's, this guns don't have the regulators inside. We're still shooting from external regs, but at this moment, the way I'm shooting my setup is I fill it to 220 bar, and then I get three high-powered shots from this gun, but I mean three very high-powered shots. I'm talking between 90 foot-pounds to close to 100, you know, if I amp it up a little bit, and I get three decent shots, but this gun is not a, a gun that you're gonna sit down and shoot 120 shots, 150 shots like the impact. That gun is built for that. This gun is more precision shooting and for long range shooting and you wanna make sure you put a lot of power at a specific point. This is what this gun is for. So very keen to get shooting today with this baby. Just nailing the center the whole time. Last one and then I'm gonna say I'm done. <laughs> cool. Gerard also took some time to set up the Maverick with the 26 grain Patriot Javelin slugs and to pop off a quick 100 meter group. The 26 grain slugs don't quite have the same BC as the 41 grain slugs that we're shooting out of the PTE and high capacity magazine in the Maverick. It's easy to cock and shoot quickly without changing your shooting position and this helps a lot when shooting groups. With all the shooting done and dusted, we take a walk to go analyze our groups. We are in deep, dusty country now, with rock formations all around us and plenty of vegetation for them to eat. A great way to go about dusty hunting is to head down a valley and stop and just scan the rock faces for movement. And after finding a really promising looking valley, we set up in a comfortable position and wait. It takes some time before the first one shows itself, but I make the opportunity count. And this is officially the first animal that I've taken with my PTE after owning it for almost a year. Smashed it. Guess that was about 45, 47 yards. No big deal with this gun, but it literally smashed him. Didn't even move. It looks like a stuffed animal. We look up and we notice that we have a few furry spectators on the mountaintops. Not on our list today, though. They are way out of air gun range. 
best to stick to the small game. Okay, we've got uh, rocks here at an angle all the way from about pff, like 200 meters all the way down to 50, which is our closest point. I think we're most likely to see them here at 50, but um, if we do get some at a longer range, you know, that's the whole point of having a high power gun, is to be able to shoot long range. So we'll definitely take the opportunity. So we don't get many shots in a day, so we have to make them count. Okay, the wind is picking up. It's a bit quieter this morning, but you know when you when you start to hear the little fan spinning, you can hear it audibly, you know, and the wind's picking up. It's like up to almost 10 miles an hour now. Well, gusts of up to 10. Most of the time it's around 4 or 5, but it is picking up a bit. Shouldn't really matter at these relatively close distances, but you know, when you start pushing the ranges out with an air gun, it will start to affect the shots. With so many different rock formations and hunting spots to check out, we move on further up the mountain and soon come across more dussies. I grab the camera, Gerard pulls out his PTE and it's all systems go. Perfect. Yo, um, everything we've taken a shot at with these PTEs has gone down straight away, not, not any delay. And I was a little bit worried that the slugs we're shooting don't have a hollow point, but I think because the, the, the nose is quite round, I think they punch pretty hard. It's almost like a, I don't know, like a 30 kill JSB pellet. It just hits hard. And I think these slugs are doing the same, so very happy with that. Our afternoon suddenly takes a 180 degree turn as we are invited to a wine farm by a farmer we happened to bump into earlier in that day and are asked to help sort out a goose problem quite spontaneously. Not only is it a beautiful location but it's also a great opportunity to see how the solid slugs do on large game birds. Well we were originally going to come out here and just take a scout around for see if we can find a couple dussies and see if this would be a good spot to shoot dussies tomorrow but we've seen a bunch of geese in the dam and Gerard and I thought you know we're not allowed to shoot them you know you don't just shoot someone's birds on their dam without asking permission um, but as we came through here the, the guy who invited us was like yo we hate those geese um, they've been they're very aggressive they scare away all the the local uh, waterfowl and the Egyptian geese aren't even supposed to be here like 10 years ago they didn't exist in this area so they're invasive um, they, need to, they need to go and we've been given permission to shoot them and they they're kind of swimming around in this dam here there's I think like seven or eight of them so we're gonna sit down with the PTEs Gharatna, and see if we can get a few of them down there is some wind but the, because the wind is we can see exactly which direction it's going on the water we can kind of know more or less what to hold for it I'm guessing we're going to be shooting between 50 and, and 150 meters but let's see what we can do I guess the the upside of single loading is that you take your time with a shot and you don't have to rush it. So let's see what happens here. I'm gonna get everything in focus. Three, two, one. Really? Uh, he's down. Cut out and I do a countdown with the aim of getting two birds down at the same time, but end up shooting the same bird. Cut <laughs> out slug gets blown a bit by the wind, but man connects and does the job. Here is the same sequence from Cut out's perspective. This clip is a great comparison between the optical quality of the Element Nexus on Cut out's rifle and the Element Helix on my rifle. 
it's pretty comical having to tether a tank while hunting but i guess that's just the unregulated life <laughs> i've chosen to rather shoot untethered so i can move around there's so many ants here that i'm literally sitting in the one spot where there's no ants which is in the middle of these thorny bushes but <laughs> if it helps me to keep still then i'll take it i get the range a bit wrong here and this shot drops a little bit low Yeah, no, never ceases to amaze me. It's really hard. Now, I was a bit worried about these slugs because they are rounded. You know, the slugs we shoot out the impact and the javelin slugs, firstly, the lead is a bit softer. Secondly, they've got a nice big hollow point. So even at like 20 foot pounds less, they tend to hit a bit harder. I was worried these would pencil through, but I think because of the round nose um, on these slugs, they're still imparting quite a bit of, quite a bit of energy as opposed to a uh, sharp nosed like spitzer shaped hollow point slug that doesn't expand um like like the very early nielsen's that were had very small hollow points some of them didn't expand they just penciled straight through this is not like that these are still hitting with some authority which is good it means they can do a wide range of work i think we're going to see some holes in the one side of the goose and out the other side it might even expand a bit you know if this lead is soft enough and it's hitting bits of bone and stuff it might actually start to mushroom out but i guess we'll have to hopefully capture one in a goose and see neat. oh straight through as well neat, neat, neat. Khalat definitely gets the award for the best shots of the day he took two fantastic headshots on the geese and here is one of them. Hundred. Do you want to go for this, the one that's in the water? Do a countdown. Do you want a countdown? Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> this time it's me who misses and Gerard who connects. It sucks to make an error, but it's nice to know that we are working in a team and getting the job done one way or another. A lot of air. A lot of air. <laughs> you feel out of breath. I've got a lot of air in my hand, but I'm still out of breath. There's another two in the back there, in case you didn't see. There's another six litre and a 6.8 litre. What, this is that an 18 litre? 18 litre. And what are these other ones? So we've got an 18 litre, we've got a 10 litre, 12 litre, we've got a 6 litre, we've got another 10 litre. Then you have? That's a 6. A 6 and then the other one's a 6.8. A 6.8. You, uh, it's a lot. If you take that together, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> a lot of it. They lock it around the, the back there by those reeds. Swimming around there, but it's, they're moving a lot and the, it's a proper crosswind from the side, so it's not going to be easy. But let's see what we can do. I don't enjoy single loading, I can tell you that. I really don't. <laughs> But hey, maybe, maybe these will come out with a magazine in the future. Hundred and fifteen. That's crazy. It's difficult to spot where the slug entered on this one, but judging by the splash behind the goose, it seemed pretty far back. Nonetheless, it's a lot of energy transferred, and after a couple flaps, he's finished. Well, he or she. Females and males look the same with these geese, so it's very difficult to tell. 
I again misjudge the distance here and the slug pass is low. Gerard spots a few wanderers on the opposite bank waddling around and sets up for a shot. It's a bit easier shooting a bird on the bank as opposed to moving about in the water but this one's still pretty far so by no means an easy shot. Nailed him. Literally just opened up his wings. Straight down. And here's that other brilliant headshot I was talking about on a moving goose from over 100 meters. Oh Pretty insane. Dead headshot. I think Gerard just nailed that one in the top of the head. <laughs> we just saw it like its head get knocked back and it do some, doing some kicks in the air like a, what do they call it, a synchronized swimmer. <laughs> uh, very funny to see, but still got some, some work to do, so. There's a few more to get down and they've been really relaxed actually. I don't think they get shot at here often, so I think it's our time to finish them off. With no more geese coming into land, we feel that it's pretty much job done. The farmer is very happy and all that's left to do is to retrieve the birds. Show me the damage cut out. So this is what the PTE does. Perfect headshot. <laughs> right on the head. Nice little hollow cavity in there. No, you can't have this one. It's fine. So, you can't get a better shot than that. It looks like 110, something like that. Another one down. Look at this. PTE punched right through the wing. Right through the main bone, look at that. Yeah. That slug just smashed right into the body. And this one I think could be in text, right? Inside. Hmm. Might have to dig it out. Well, you may see um, in the background there, those are the farm workers coming to fetch the geese we just shot. They will appreciate the meat. But um, awesome little session here. It was quite spontaneous. Hmm. We were like out on a different farm and um, we got spontaneously invited to come out here. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> saw a bunch of geese on the dam and nice got the opportunity, Gerard with his PTE, myself with my PTE and uh, my impact as well. PTE is a bit challenging because <laughs> if you need a follow-up <laughs> shot, you have to single load and you've got to uh, fill, up. fill up the air and all of that. So when I got the impact out, Gerard told me I'm cheating. <laughs> but yeah, that was, a, that was an awesome time, a lot of fun. and. Uh, um, yeah, it's been a while since we got a decent bag like this. Yeah. So that was a really awesome lacquer. one. Nice yeah. quick one. Awesome. Cool. It was really cool to have all the farm workers pull in and see the smiles on all their faces as we handed them their dinner. One of the highlights of my day, for sure. <laughs> and the best part is that it was all for free. <laughs>
the Nexus. I'm very, very happy with how it's holding up in a, in a real life hunt. Very, very happy. With the fire burning away nicely, we have two things on our minds. Number one, getting guns set up for a little shooting session later, and of course, food. Nothing like the smell of a steak after a long day of hunting. What's going on here? So, what I'm doing now is, I'm just going to do a slight adjustment to my trigger here. And I want to see if I can do a little bit of a, a power adjustment to this gun. And by doing that, I'm loosening the hammer and I'm actually adjusting the stroke and making it hit harder. So if you hit harder, it's like a normal gun. The more air flows through, the faster is velocity. And uh, while I'm doing that, I have to take off the Bix and Andy trigger system. And then I'm sort of nicely going to blow out the trigger system, clean it out nicely while I'm busy and reassemble and good to go again. So I've got a spinner here with me quickly. It's like pitch, pitch black at the moment. And I'm going to put it down at 50 yards and then maybe at 100. And take a couple of shots right in the dark. I've got my O-Lite mounted on my impact. Um, and we're going to take a couple of shots down there and see how these lights performing. The light that you are seeing shining right on me now is the Warrior X Turbo that Matt's got next to the camera at the moment. And we've got no, no filming lights on tonight. We're only going to use the O-Lights, so everything you see is filmed with O-Lights. So let me take a walk down there quickly. Yeah, I'm going to stay here and just shine on you and yeah. you can walk. You take a shine with that light and I'll take a walk. Cool. Right, so there's the lights. Let's take the first shot. Perfect. Hit. Without any problems, like you guys can see, that's out at 100. And this is like pitch black at the moment, and I'm taking shots there. And I mean, if there was any kind of target down there or anything you want to hunt, that animal would have been dead on the spot. So, really, really efficient lights. Right, so my turn. I've got my impact dialed to 100 yards, and I've got the uh, Olight M2R on the side. Unfortunately, I really wanted to use mine because my um, uh, Warrior X Turbo is like extremely good for long range shooting, very, very bright. But unfortunately, yeah, I tried to fit it to the pick rail with a pick rail adapter and my bottle and my scope got in the way. So I'm using Gerard setup, but we are going to turn it on here. We're going to give it a few shots. Hit record. And I should all be dialed up. Let's see what we can do. It's so cool seeing that slug pull in from that far away. I'm a bit shaky, I'm shooting off a bag, but. Oh, that's so cool. Should I go for the top? Try, go for it. Just passed one more time. There we go. Oh, I just nicked it. Yeah, that's amazing. One inch spinner at a hundred, sitting on my knees, shooting off a bag through a scope cam with a 40 grain slug at 80 foot pounds. I know you'd never believe me if I said this is a 40 grain slug at 80 foot pounds, that's 950 feet per second out of an impact. At that sound level, it's actually really amazing. It doesn't kick at all. It just, it's a reminder of how amazing this gun is actually. But yeah, it absolutely drills them. It loves the 40 grand slugs. So hopefully we can get some dussies tomorrow, but see what happens. 
we played with our toys like little kids at Christmas long into the night and that's how we are going to end this episode we have plenty more coming over the next few weeks so make sure to subscribe to stay notified and I'll see you then as always thanks for watching